Hello there. Today we're going to talk about structs, but before we do, I'm going to show an example on the terminal. Now, we have the users module here, right? Where we create a new user, we generate a default user. Okay, but what if I do this? I say user equals name, it's a map with the name field, and then I add the field is admin true. Is this going to work? Yes. Why? Because the user is just a generic map. I can add and remove whatever fields I want, and then nothing is going to happen. Now, this is not ideal, right? We usually want some type of validation or like compile time check to make sure that we are actually dealing with a user and not a generic map. So how do we create a map that has specifically a set of fields? We can use structs for that. Now, I am going to convert the entire users module into a struct. And this is the syntax for it. Usually below the def module, you're going to type def struct, okay? And then here, you're going to pass a keyword list with the names of the fields that you want for the struct. So here I'm going to say name, and as an example, email, okay? So if I go back to the terminal, I run recompile, now, if I want to deal with a user, instead of creating a generic map before the percentage sign here in the brackets, you're going to type the name of your struct. So here is users, correct? So watch what happens here. If I say name, Daniel, that is going to work because I didn't pass an email, so by default, the value is new. But what if I do this? Is admin true? Whoa, the key is admin is not found. Awesome. This is precisely what we wanted. So we have specific fields for this specific map, which is now a struct, any other field that is not name or email, it's not allowed. You cannot throw a random is admin here because the user struct doesn't have an is admin. Now, what if I want to pass a default value? How do I do that? You can do the following syntax name, colon, I'm going to say the default value is Daniel. And then I'm going to say that, I don't know email, the default value is daniel at gmail.com, right? So I'm going to recompile. What happens if I create an empty users uh, struct? There you go. I didn't pass any field and now I have the name daniel and the email daniel at gmail.com. Awesome. All right, but what if I want to have specific fields. I don't want to add any uh, default values, but I want to say that the name is mandatory. You cannot create a user's struct without a name. How can we say it's mandatory? So on top of dev struct, you're going to type at, and I actually forgot what is the name? It's, I think, enforce keys. Enforce keys, ensure the key. Yes, exactly. So we're going to say enforce keys, and then you're going to pass the keyword list of the keys that you want to enforce. So here, it's just name, okay? Now let's go back to the terminal, recompile. If I create a empty user struct, there you go. The following keys must also be given when building users structs name and if i pass a name but i don't pass an email what happens that works because the default value for email is new and i am not enforcing the email 
okay so it can be new so let's do a little bit of refactoring on our functions here first of all i want to say that the user struct it has a name i also have an age is cool can drink so name is cool oops i am missing the age is cool and also can drink right i'm going to say that the only mandatory field is name that is all right okay now instead of returning a random map now i'm going to say users all right and watch what happens if i say if i remove the name from users now i get an error the following keys must be given name pretty nice right so now i'm going below and then on every single map that i'm creating i'm now going to say that it's a user's struct and if i don't see any errors that means that they all are working which is nice and if i add like a wrong a field here i'm going to get an error which is exactly what i expected you can see that the key wrong is not found perfect key wrong that doesn't exist okay now i'm going to show you an example of how you can use pattern matching to see if a specific data type is a user struct let's create a super useful function called check here i just want to check if the function parameter is a user struct okay so i'm going to do a pattern matching here and this is the syntax users equal to user okay and then if this pattern matching works i'm going to return true so actually let me simplify true okay and i'm not using the user variable for anything i'm just doing a pattern match so you whoops whoop. you can do you can add an underscore here right and then you can also add the default case for this function which is if i have like a user variable and that is not a struct i want to return false correct all right so let's recompile and do some tests on the terminal recompile i'm going to say uh, user one the user one is going to be just a generic map with the mandatory field of name okay now this is just a map it has the only mandatory field but it's a map and i'm going to create user two the user two is going to be the same thing but now it's a struct users with a name daniel all right nice so let me call the users dot check function i'm going to run check on the user one we should get a false nice and if i do a users dot check on the user two we should get true nice so there you go this is structs the syntax as always it's a bit awkward you need to add these two uh dev struct and enforce keys right below the dev module and then you can pass a default value or just the keys that you want inside the struct and i'm going to show you inside tech school a couple of examples where we use a pattern matching on structs so for example every time you create a context on elixir and phoenix you have a bunch of functions like create uh create delete get and here let me show you an example where is that where is this okay so for example i created the bootcamps uh, context for tech school and before i delete the bootcamp 
I actually want to make sure that the bootcamp that I'm receiving is in fact a bootcamp struct and not a random map. Okay, this is important. On another uh, helper function that I created to add the slug to the bootcamp, I am also checking if it is a bootcamp struct, right? Now, if I removed this, this could be dangerous because that means that now I can pass any random map for this function and this is not what I want, okay? And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, structs are extremely useful and you're going to use them a lot on Phoenix. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.